when I um, call the meeting to order. It's going to be difficult. Um, I'm not sure it's the 19th of October, my baby boy's birthday. He's, um, I think he was 27. <laughs> 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 um, well, welcome to um, today's combined authority meeting. Um, can we, as always, make certain that folks attend to silence? I remind members when uh, they're using uh, the microphone to sit as close as they possibly can because they work that, that way until we go through the government and get new microphones which are on their way. Um, apologies for absence first. Received apologies from Councillor Neil, Reverend Loudon and Lou Collins. Any further apologies to add? Okay, two is declarations of interest. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm declaring uh, an interest which is pre previously on the, uh, on the register in relation to the Park South Link Road, where I'm a local authority nominee to a joint venture. So, therefore, I will not uh, speak or vote on, on the item prior to its decision. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, three is the minutes of the previous meeting, which was held on the 21st of September, and then included in pages one to six. Can they be? Um, item four is um, people will have read, heard, or watched um, the announcement that Councillor Phil Davis will not be standing for re election at the local elections in 2019. And I think everybody here knows that it was Phil who chaired the first combined authority uh, in 2014, and he was pivotal in securing a historic devolution deal for the city region. So everybody in the room, I'm sure, will want to share our sincere thanks for the dedication and commitment he's given, supporting the work of the combined authority. And we look forward to working with Phil over the next few months um, until he goes uh, to pass his view uh, with the slippers, apparently, and with the grandkids, which is something we'll also be looking forward to. Um, today is Show Racism the Red Card, We're at Red Day, a national day of action by Racism, um, which, uh, show racism uh, the Red Card, which uh, encourages schools, businesses and individuals to wear red and to donate one pound to help facilitate the delivery of anti-racism education for young people and adults throughout the uh, England and Scotland world. Now, there is a book somewhere, I'm not sure what that is, and we've all got red on and I'm not certain how many of us have contributed to that bucket, but we will get it and pass it round to enable that we do uh, raise every penny that we possibly can to support the campaign. Um, yesterday we came back from two and a half days <coughs> in the middle of UK uh, where there was a Liverpool and Nosey stand in the city region and Nosey stand uh, in London which promotes the city region as one of the leading places for investments in the UK and showcased our major future investments <coughs> and infrastructure plans. Um, it also highlighted the major projects like Shakespeare for the North, for instance, um, the local knowledge quarter, and a number of other things. I also showcased the city region's proposal for one front door, where we announced it to a large contingent uh, of business uh, people who, uh, on the block, were delighted that we do now have one point of contact. We'll be discussing that in today's meeting later. But in general, there's huge interest in the local city region at the conference. And it goes to, I think, outline uh, the, and underline the huge potential that we have in the local city region for uh, investments in FDI. Uh, my latest question time took place late, uh, early this month uh, in Sefton, uh, and usually I took questions on everything, but there's a wide range of topics, and in particular, to concern of people in um, Sefton with issues relating to air quality and congestion and um, roads, etc. Um, when I was elected, I pledged that there would be uh, access to the Metro Mayor and I'd be <coughs> as accessible as possible to the public to ensure that they could relate their concerns directly to me. So these are questions in time events. Um, it's just one of the ways in which we're trying to do that. They are not easy to organise and, and quite difficult to fit into the uh, packed agenda that we have. But um, 
done all six now and we'll start a, a new round in the next uh, few months. Two weeks ago, um, two weeks ago, uh, the Giants, the Liverpool in Wirral uh, and the Liverpool City Centre, and it's supposed to be the last one. I think uh, Joe is, um, I was going to say he's got grey hair, Joe, but he probably is grey hair in there somewhere. Um, with the amount of organisation that goes into something as spectacular as that weekend was absolutely fantastic to showcase the Wirral and Liverpool, but also areas um, of, of people who came over that we discussed what the city region has to offer. Um, anybody, I didn't get there, but anybody who went to New Brighton Beach, apparently, it's a people crying at the, the um, extravagance that was put on it. And, I have missed out big time, but I did see them doing the um, uh, Mission Impossible jump uh, in Castle Street, which I just thought was literally hand blown and brilliant to have come up with that concept. But it's part of a year long 2018, 10 years since Capital of Culture programme of events, uh, which the Combined Authority contributed £5 million towards, and I'm sure that was. Uh, very, very much welcomed by uh, the city of Liverpool. And I want to take the opportunity on behalf of all of us, everybody here, everybody in this building, to thank all of the staff, uh, so that's the staff from the CA, for Mersey Travel, who did a remarkable job. And I know people had delays on trains. Of course they did when you get half a million people, 600,000 people come to one area at any one time. Try going to London and have a sport after the match at Wembley, there are delays. Try going to the MEN at Manchester, there are delays. So inevitably there are going to be delays on our network. But I think the team worked by Trojans to ensure that they, those delays were as um, short as they possibly could be. Uh, obviously to Liverpool and Rural Councils and the leadership of those uh, councils who were involved in the organisation uh, from day one and in particular. I think this is um, a game from, from Phil and Joe. Um, the hundreds of volunteers who gave up their time freely to be part of such a special weekend for the city region. So um, I think all in all, um, the publicity, and I'm sure somebody's doing some evaluation of what that was for the city region. Um, it's a five million pound investment. I'm saying that it will be many times and multiply on the five million and put it to that because it goes back on the map if we ever disappeared from it, which we didn't. Um, okay, we're on to item five, the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority Corporate Plan. And you recall that at our last meeting we agreed the approach to produce the corporate plan for 2018 and the plan now is being drafted and it's presented for your consideration. And Casey is going to take us through the key headlines on that plan. Thank you. So yes, as the uh, report sets out, you've already agreed the overall approach that we take to producing the plan. The intention is that this will be a high-level document um, which sets out the overall ambition and uh, ambition and vision for the combined authority. Uh, it also goes through some of the next steps and actions on the key policy areas uh, that we have responsibility for taking forward um, over the next period and the paper has to be agreement to the draft plan. Any questions on the draft plan? No? Okay. Uh, are the recommendations are set out on page 7 of the report, therefore agreed? Six is um, the LEP, um, which is the Ministerial Review of the Partnerships, and we, uh, explains the outcome of the recently published Ministerial Review and its implications on the city region. Mark Bassman, who is the Manager Director of the LEP, will take us through this report. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I hope that the uh, report is pretty self-evident in terms of what we're trying to achieve here. Um, the purpose of it is to, to bring leaders up to speed of the, the lab review impl implications, um, particularly given the, the CA's implications in the close relationship between uh, the lab and the CA's organisations. And also specifically to ask the, 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 the leaders to, uh, to delegate authority of the, the CA elements of the response to government um, to the uh, chief executive. Authority, given the deadline that we're working to. Um, I think this is a positive step. I think the, the principles that suggest are ones that we need to be compliant with this review. 
um, uh, and to, to, to strengthen arrangements here. But we need to also very much take control of it so it's in our interests. Um, so the, the process that's underway, working with colleagues from local authorities, uh, from the combined authority as well as the like board members, is to ensure that what we ultimately come out with uh, does just that. Um, the reason for bringing this um, report at this stage is that we've got a formal deadline of submission uh, that we have to meet by the end of this month. So I'm really describing the, the process and the issues at this point. We will come back to, to this board to set out the, the detail that we've worked through over the coming months as we get this detail right. I'm very happy to take questions, Chair. Any questions for Mark? Okay, if not, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 35 of the report? Seven is uh, the report which seeks the adoption of the International Holocaust Remnants Alliance, the IHRA definition of anti Semitism. And Kirsty is going to take us to this report. Thank you. So, this has been discussed previously at the combined authority, and this is the report which recommends that we formally adopt um, the working definition of anti Semitism that the IHRA sets out. Any questions for Kirsty? If not, can we do the recommendations to set out on page 71 of that report? Eight is the City Region Skills Investment Statement. The CSR um, it seeks approval from the City Region Skills Investment Statement. And the statement is an important document for the City Region as it sets out an ambitious schedule of activity and actions which aims to improve the skill level the economic output and employment opportunities for residents and businesses right away across the city region and again, as is the case the first half, the case is going to take us through this part. Thank you. So yes, this paper um, <coughs> sets out the skills investment statement uh, for the next year. This is uh, drawn from the skills strategy um, which was agreed in March of this year by the combined authority. Uh, the skills investment statement takes that strategy and looks at the likely focus um, for training in the city region over the next period. Um, it also reflects any changes in, for example, labour market information, again, to inform decisions about the training provision that's needed across the city region during this period. Um, it will also be the wider context for any further commissioning that's needed, and the combined authority is asked to agree the statement as set out. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, Councillor May, do you want to add anything further to the report? Sure, the actions uh, are set out on page 103 and 104. I'll uh, explain a bit more in detail where, where we're going to go over the next 12 months. I'd just like to add that the, <coughs> the progress of, of, of this will go to the Employment <coughs> Skills Board and will also be reported to me as the portfolio holder as well, so we can monitor the progress and other things are going on and help us identify and direct next year's statement is <coughs> a little document, isn't it? So, so we need to have that to take it forward and to, to understand where we are, how we're progressing, and how we want to progress in the, in the next two or three years as well. With that said, can we agree with the recommendations as it says that on page 75 in the report? Uh, nine is the um, <coughs> the adult education budget, which has been a key feature, a feature of the devolution agreement uh, signed by the fellow in 20, November 2015. It's taken a little bit longer than any of us would have liked to, but the report explains the progress has been made in relation to the proposed commissioning and the approach for the city region's devolved adult education budget. Sue Jobs is going to take us through this. Thank you, Chair. The, the combined authority will be taking over responsibility for adult skills from the 1st of August 2019 and that's when the adult education budget will finally be devolved to us. An indicative budget for the city region that has been issued and that's in the region of £52 million per year, although the final figure will be confirmed by the Department for Education in um, January next year. Devolution is, is a key um, of the adult skills budget is key for us because it provides the opportunity to implement the changes for adult skills that have been set out in the skills strategy that was already noted. In section four of the report, 
it describes the proposed commissioning approach and the rationale for that. Um, and it also sets out that it's been informed by our skills priority strategies um, and by some market engagement that we carried out during the summer months. What we're actually proposing in the report is a dual approach to commissioning and this will involve a combination of grant funding agreements that will be issued to FE colleges that are based within the Liverpool city region and our six local authorities. But we will also be issuing a procurement process, competitive tender process for all other providers who are wishing to deliver in the city region from next year. And the process for that starts um, next month. In terms of just an area to draw to your attention, Appendix 2 proposes a number of local flexibilities uh, that we're looking to develop and deliver in the early days of devolution. Um, and in all cases where we look to do that, we've got to be mindful we don't duplicate existing provision that's already out there. Post-devolution, we will have a much stronger relationship with providers and colleges um, as we move forward. And that's really important because a lot of this is about behaviour change and new ways of working as we look to um, have a much more localised approach to skills. Um, just finishing off, um, the report's recommendations, um, if I can highlight those there on page 109. Sorry for the mic. Yeah, yeah, well, um, I'm sure Council Mayor wants to just add to that. Thank you, Chair. It is a significant milestone for us, isn't it? it it's one of the, the really important stuff that we did when we were having the negotiations led by Phil, as you said before. Uh, good government when we were discussing the devolution deal, and, and this is part of the one of the wins that we, we, we achieved. And it's, it has took a long time for this to come through. Um, I won't go into my spiel about civil servants stopping work or a half when an elections when the election is called. You know, because that absolutely fascinates me. That's delayed us significantly. But what was being parliament this week, so you know, we're on a track now ready to go. And, and it's a big issue for us, isn't it? I mean a big responsibility for that devolution of that funding. And I'm just bearing in mind it is actually twenty five percent of the total funding that comes into the patch for for adults training so but that's even that is a significant amount of, of the funding that comes in and, and why did we want to do it we wanted to do it because we believe that a local focus on what the needs of local people and local businesses are is better better understood and better supported locally rather than <coughs> national programs so we've done it we've got there we have the education budget it's going to be an important part of how we take things forward. It's going to be a slow, slow process, and as Sue said, we will start to change how our providers provide and help them and assist them provide our learners with the skills that they will need in the coming years. And that's a really important issue in itself. As you know, people in this room know that some of the jobs that not my grandchildren, for instance, are going to be doing in their, in their coming adult lives haven't even been created yet. So we need to be on the front foot and I strongly believe that having the influence that we now have on this particular funding is, is going to be really helpful in us being able to progress that as, as we go forward. And it follows on Chair, from, from the early based review that we did, first one in the country to, to chair the early based review of our FE colleges which was to do with the financial stability of the colleges and, and make sure that the the offer given to them is sustainable, but also for the first time there's been an influence and a a, a conversation, I think is a good word, um, on how the curriculum progresses. So, first step, Chair, here we go, I recommend this to, to you. I'm right, well, the first step. Um, it's not an office here, we want more, and we are putting um, some detailed evidence-based proposals to governments over uh, apprenticeship levy funding and lots of other things that we believe would be better delivered more locally than the absolute shambolic mess that the current governments have made of this. <coughs> um, the delay uh, that you refer to, Peter, um, 
that can't be an excuse, can it, in the future for what's happened to us? Because let's face it, there could be another failure, failure at any time in the next few days, weeks, months ahead. Nobody knows when that next <coughs> time is going to happen. Otherwise, you'd probably be very rich by that another day. Um, are there any other questions on that report? Go. Just a comment, too. It might be worthwhile now.
people are looking to invest, make more, more efficient use of resources. But I think the key point is <coughs> this is aimed at one increasing the number of the, the amount of investment that we get into the city region, the number of jobs. Um, and crucially, it's it's not, as Mark has said, to detract or take anything away from existing local authority um, teams who, who do this work. So it's, it's very much complementary uh, to, to what's already done and adds value, will add value um, to uh, to what we do. So I, I, I welcome this report and I think it's something certainly that the private sector uh, has been has been asking for uh, for a number of years and, and I think um, uh, this is a, a really good basis to come up with a a much more efficient uh, model, and, and as I say, uh, in, increase the amount, the total amount of investment we get into the city region. So I, I really welcome this. I know Mark is, is going to come back to us with a detailed business plan around this, but I think in terms of the model and the principles, I, I very much welcome it. Great. Can we uh, uh, see? Um, thank you very much for the report. Just to reiterate what Phil said, I think it's a great. <coughs> one which has been requested for a number of years from the private sector. Um, and I do think it's a great showcase for us, not just nationally, but internationally, to show the collaboration between the city and region leaders as well. This one. So I think we've taken something which is which is needed, requested, changing the environment, walking <coughs> forward, and hopefully driving forward, we should see results from putting together this structural <coughs> organisation, structure and get less less of the complex that we're now starting investors so a great initiative on them. Uh, can I just on behalf of all the leaders echo the thanks that uh, Phil made to everybody who, who's been involved in this <coughs> but these things are very difficult to deliver and we have done and it's uh, being received very very well so can we therefore agree the recommendations are set out in page one two seven of the report Eight, uh, so 11 is the launch of the Strategic Investment Fund Round 2 in this report, proposals, a new approach uh, for how the second round of the SIF funding will operate and explains how those projects which are still in round 1 will be completed and Mark Bowsfield is going to take us through the detail of that report. Thank you, Chair. This paper brings together the various diverse threads that we need to address in order to relaunch the Strategic Investment Fund and get back to supporting projects that we drive up market growth and well-being across our city region. It has three parts. The first is the steps necessary for the relaunch, so a review of the performance of round one, an update on the SIP review, switching money between a gain share part and the local growth fund pot in order to maximise our output performance and some things to, efficient, to, to facilitate the efficient performance of the, of the fund. So uh, a quicker approval for small projects and pre-development funding to, to improve our pipeline. It also includes the cultural sector in the strategy since that was missed out in the original July submission. It then provides a context for relaunch, our medium term potential, our ability to receive and invest more money if we're seen to be operating successfully in solving governance problems. And a series of commission projects that we would like to start work on immediately. Finally, it presents a, a, an outline structure for a call uh, that we're working with the chief executives and lead the regeneration office to elaborate prior to relaunch. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Mark. Um, I think um, this is a, another progression along the, uh, the road, which has been a very long road, into ensuring that we get as much as we possibly can from the investments that we make. Uh, I think, Phil, do um, you want to add some comments? Well, only to say, I think this is a much more um, kind of uh, um, sophisticated kind of process for divvying out this, this import. This was the big the big new pot of money we got with the Devo deal. Um, and, and I think the, the model that Mark's outlined is a much more sensible one and um, I, I think gives us the best possible chance of using this money wisely 
um, and using it also as a, a revolving fund, so it brings money back into the city region rather than just a straightforward kind of grant regime. And crucially, I think it puts the building blocks in place to make sure we've got credible projects you know, coming through. That pre-development work is so crucial um, to making sure we've got projects which actually will deliver uh, within the time scale. So I, I very much welcome this, uh, this approach and, and congratulate Mark on the, uh, on, on the work that he and his team has done around this. Thanks, Chair. Okay, can we agree the recommendations are set up on page 145 <coughs> and 146 of the report? 12 is the, um, the report seeking its approval of a full business case in relation to the Parkside Lake Road uh, and to award the maximum capital grant of £23,790,786 to be precise, no pence. Uh, and Derek, uh, as already declared, is interested in this, so Mark's going to take us to this report. Uh, I won't be contributing to the, the, the debate, decision, or discussion. Uh, it is actually my award. So I just thought I'd mention that it's actually my award and I'm take it rather than any of the discussion. Okay, we didn't know that, but thanks for that. Yeah, 
atmosphere. Um, 13 is um, one of those issues that come from the time to time, which is a bit of technical housekeeping. And the combined authority has previously awarded the Women's Technology Training Limited one million nine hundred £961,976 to the Lucas and the Gold Enterprise Futures 2, which is a project that was due to take place across two sites. However, due to a number of issues, the applicant has requested that the project be based solely on one site. So Mark is going to take us through um, the rest of what I have told you. Thanks, Jack. This is mainly an administrative change. This is a project that was foreseen to be across two sites. One of those sites is not quite ready, but the benefits and the outcomes can be generated in the first site. We've had the change reappraised and it continues to represent good value for money and recommend it on that basis. Any questions? Okay, can we read the recommendation set up on page 259 of the report, please? 14 is uh, prioritising brownfield housing sites and the, the approach um, that we're going to take to regard brownfield housing sites in relation to the LCRCA brownfield land register and Council Long is going to be taking us through briefly this report. Uh, thank you Mr Mayor, this is uh, very much about bringing forward those uh, commitments that you made in your, your manifesto and demonstrates how we can turn the proposition of Brownfield First into a more realistic and uh, tangible activity. Um, across the city region there, just shy of 500 hectares of Brownfield uh, land. That's land was previously used with infrastructure often uh, around in terms of roads and schools and things like that, and land that we are uh, having difficulty getting built on. Um, that could generate perhaps 22,000 uh, additional homes, um, which is obviously uh, attractive in terms of supporting that infrastructure. But the catch is that it may cost up to two hundred fifty thousand pounds per hectare. Who knows? It could be much, much more, up towards a million by some of the estimates in, in terms of this report. So that's the catch, and this is how we um, are proposing to go uh, go forward. It sets out the background of what we've achieved, uh, recommends that we endorse the desire of I think we all share to prioritise brownfield land where we possibly can do, and then ask for support of the approach that will uh, um, secure funding for the development of these brownfield It's actually some of these brownfields are going forward. This is big money, this is a key strategic investment that we require from uh, uh, from uh, outside the city region's resources and that's why we're emphasising it. Um, if we achieve this uh, approach, I think this will facilitate a significant delivery of housing for the sustainable uh, currently brownfield land. Thank you for Mr. Chairman. Of course, the attraction for developers on Greenfield is the uh, it's page in London. It's not being developed on the problem that we have within the brownfield register is that we don't know what the cost of remediation of some of those brownfield sites will be. And we're going to wake that up and have a joint approach with Homes England, who we've spoken to over the last few days, in regard to the, uh, the government supporting the developments on these uh, areas, which we would hope to prioritise. So, um, given that Derek's clearly outlined what the approach is, are there any questions? Can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 271, please? Uh, 15 is the condition of the key loop network, and the report sets out the priority issues following the Highways Infrastructure Assessment Management Plan, the HIAMP, which was commissioned to define a key loop network of local roads across the city region. And Councillor Robinson is going to take us through this report. Yeah, thanks very much. And, and very briefly, uh, the report obviously references very detailed work that's been going on for the past 18 months, really assessing the condition of the key room network and all its assets. And um, that work has then gone to inform the recommendation that's before you with how the £3 million of allocation for the key room network is suggested to be distributed across districts and across 
uh, the network and for clarity, that's option 2A uh, in the final table in the paper. The other point that I would make reference to as well is that a lot of work has been going on amongst the legal offices and the command authority across the district and the report seeks the approval to continue with that work for the monitoring officer and the relevant uh, constituent authority local um, legal teams to develop the section 111 agreements that are required to oversee the key group network. Okay, any questions on that? Um, what we do need to do is on the, the table, which is appendix five, we do need to ensure that we put the appropriate amounts in uh, and uh, not allocate £293 uh, to St. Helens Prince and Stadis £293,000. Uh, but we will amend that and bring it back uh, and complete it. Are, are there any questions? Can we therefore agree the recommendations are set out on page 277? Um, 16 is the both the uh, budget and monitoring statements and the treasury management position update, uh, which John Fogarty is going to take us through. Thank you, Matt. Uh, oh, Mike. <coughs> yes, this is the half yearly finance update, which, as you'll see from the report, is broadly as the budget that was agreed in February. So um, activities are kept within the budget despite what is a particularly challenging financial environment, particularly for transport. Uh, one thing I would draw attention to as well is the proposal to bring forward 1.25 million uh, into this year to enable the acceleration of work that's um, been undertaken on smart ticketing, which is an important uh, priority and a strategic priority for transport as well this year. Um, other than that, I think all the information should be in the report, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, there is a, China, a, a, a challenging financial environment, and we're under considerable pressure, but I noticed within the budget that there's no line that says we need new microphones, and we just obviously uh, demonstrated ably why we need that. Uh, come, are there any questions on budget um, statements? If not, can we agree the recommendations that set out on page 299? Um, on item 17, which is public question time, we haven't received any questions from this meeting that were uh, submitted before the deadline. And ditto on 18, we've not received any petitions or statements for this meeting that met the deadline. 19 is the minutes of the Transport Committee, which are held on 6th December, uh, September. 2018, uh, it's to confirm the minutes of that meeting. Is that agreed? The next meeting with the final authority will take place on Friday, the 16th of November 2018, at the clock here in the authority chamber. 